Hi, Dr. Tony Mork, uh, board certified orthopedic surgeon. Today I'm going to talk about adjacent disc disease after a fusion. I had a patient come in this past week and he'd had a fusion 10 years back, which worked fairly well for him for a number of years. However, within the last year, he began to get increasing back, buttock, and particularly leg pain. Active guy, he's only 64 years of age. He's a big racquetball player, and in this particular case, he's just become increasingly symptomatic and had to give it up. So he had a fusion back about 10 years ago, and let's take a look and see what's going on. Taking a look at his MRI scan, we can see on the side of the sagittal view here, his disc spaces look really good, except for this. This is 4, this is four L5. This dark space here between is the level where he was fused 10 years ago. And these are from cages that were placed in here. Uh, it looks like a very satisfactory fusion. The disc spaces that look good are here and here and here, but above the fusion, there's the fusion level, so one level above the fusion, we can see darkening of the disc, narrowing, some disc bulging, as well as some overgrowth posteriorly. When we look at the axial slice on the MRI that corresponds to the adjacent disc disease level, we can see some very, very significant enlargement of the facets, which is the most common pathologic thing to occur in adjacent disc disease. So the level above the fusion has been probably overworked, and these facets are enlarged. And now you can see that this is all that's left that you can see of the spinal cord. Uh, it's been compressed significantly as compared, is opposed to looking at it maybe a level or so above where we can see that this is the normal appearance and the little dots actually represent the nerves of the cauda equina or the spinal cord. We can see it starts to get compressed as we go a little bit lower and then it gets really compressed as we get into the maximum area where the degenerative facets are pushing in. This is what's referred to as adjacent disc disease. In case you don't know, this is one level above the fusion, and this is where the disease is occurring. Okay, let's, take a, let's make a few comments about adjacent disc disease, uh, which actually now has been studied in some fairly long-term uh, uh, studies. One thing we know is that fusion is a great treatment for a condition of degenerative spondylolisthesis. There's no question that this offers the best possible outcome for these people. But as fusions are being performed in younger and younger people, and as the indications for fusion have continued to expand, there maybe is some question about the long-term effects of fusion in certain cases and certain uh, populations. Certainly, there are a lot of papers to suggest that fusion and decompression offer some very satisfactory results. But there's also a large number of papers that actually describe fusion as unpredictable, if not outright unsatisfactory. There are some long-term studies that have been performed up to 33 years in follow-up, which is a really long time. In some of these studies, looking at the spine 10 years out from the time of the fusion shows a couple different things. One, the discs above, the disc spaces above the fusion. So for an example, the one that we have in this case, this is the disc space above the level of the fusion here, and this one is below. In the studies, in the radiographic studies analyzing the long-term effects of fusion on the adjacent levels, demonstrates that degenerative changes can occur at least 50% of the time in the level above and 70% in the level below. Looking at the MRI scan of exactly the same patients demonstrated 70% degenerative changes in the level above and 100% degenerative changes in the level below. But we have to kind of keep in mind does it make any difference? And that's what we call a clinical correlation. 
In other words, does it really make any difference if these radiographic changes are occurring in the spine, either on x-rays or the MRI? Well, I can say that in 37% of the time, people will be getting some symptoms as a result of these adjacent disc disease changes. So it seems to be fairly significant. When we look at adjacent disc disease and the changes, we have to ask two questions with respect to clinical correlation. One, is this just simply a progression of degenerative changes of the spine? Or is there a biomechanical reason that this is occurring? Or is there a biomechanical reason that might account for the clinical changes in these long-term follow-up studies? It's a little hard to decipher, but certainly there are some studies that have been done that show that a fusion causes increased mobility at the adjacent levels and also some increased pressure inside the discs. So it certainly is possible from a biomechanical point that this is influencing the occurrence of adjacent disc disease changes. What about treatment or prevention? Well, one thing that's been tried in Europe and now catching on in the United States is that of artificial disc replacement in the lumbar spine. And what do we know about that? Well, the studies are relatively small, but one thing in one of the studies noted was that actually 22% of the adjacent levels after a disc replacement had to be reoperated on two years out. Now, whether again this was due to biomechanical or progressive degenerative changes is a little uncertain, but it does. It just means that even doing a artificial disc replacement does not mean that adjacent disc disease is not going to occur. What can we say for sure? Well, for sure, adjacent disc disease is going to be increased above and below the level of fusion when looking at radiographic changes, either an x-ray or an MRI scan. And two, at least 36 or 37 percent of the time, there will be changes, clinical changes, that have to be addressed surgically after about 10 years. So whether this is caused directly by the fusion or not, more study has yet to come. Thanks a lot for listening. Check me out, drtonymort.com. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to call. Thank you.